Okay, so what we're going to discuss is the sonnet from Romeo and Juliet, which is... Star-crossed lovers, the subject of a Shakespeare senior class workshop at New York's Fordham University. She's a holy shrine, right? Leading the seminar with degrees from Yale, Harvard, and Oxford, an English scholar with a surprising double life. What about what she says? To students and faculty, she's Professor Mary Bly. But to legions of readers, like those at this champagne-flowing book party that evening, she's author Eloisa James. So it's my first kidnapping. <laughs> a reigning queen of romance. How hard is it to be a Shakespeare professor by day and a romance novelist by night? It's hard. It really is hard. Romance is a really denigrated genre. I mean, it's Academically speaking, it's less cool than porn, right? Under the Eloisa James nom de plume, she's written 22 bestsellers that sparkle with wit and always deliver what romance lovers call the H-E-A, the happily ever after. The promise of romance is that you and the people you love will, will live together into the future. It's a beautiful promise, right? Why does romance need to be defended? I think in some ways it is a genre written by women and for women and many of the sort of the people who define what real literature is in this country are male. And honestly, romance readers and romance writers don't really care all that much about what you think of us. The publishing industry sure does. Romance is a billion dollar business, making up an estimated 30% of the fiction market. Some books, like Fifty Shades of Grey, become Hollywood blockbusters. But it's not all about... Well, you get the picture. What's the biggest myth about romance? That they're all just sex, and that's so untrue. Sarah Wendell runs Smart Bitches Trashy Books, an online community of romance readers. What is it about romance that attracts smart bitches? <laughs> Well, part of it is being told by a countless number of books, you are important, you matter, your emotions matter, your experience matters, and your happiness matters. She is one sigh away from a real wardrobe malfunction. Wendell has been devouring romance without shame for going on three decades. His shirt is actually taped down to his chest. She'll also be the first to poke fun at it, you know, lovingly. Well, there's something very strange about her. Okay. Well, she's not wearing a bra, but that's okay. That's not wrong, right? No. Um, no, it's fine. She looks perfect. What's... She has three hands. <gasps> As for the categories, they run the gamut. Same sex, suspense, sci-fi, pretty much everything. Let's say I want Amish love. Absolutely. Okay. I want um, dinosaurs? Yes, but mostly parody erotica. Okay. In Los Angeles, there's an entire bookstore devoted to romance called, what else, The Ripped Bodice. Checking out the store, romance rock star Beverly Jenkins. I've got a couple novellas coming out. She's another best-selling novelist, writing about African-American heroines from the 19th century, whose stories offer not only lessons in love, but history. It's about values, it's about families, it's about maybe a story that the majority culture does not associate with an African-American background. Um, hope and a bittersweet history and taking the lemons that America's given us and making lemonade out of it. Love, sex, empowerment, and that happily ever after. When it comes to romance novels, don't judge the book by its cover. So almost always, and I would say like virtually always, you can have a big alpha hero, but at the end, the person in charge is the heroine. End of story. <laughs>